What I want to do is uh, look at, uh, give an overview of the tumor microenvironment in kidney cancer, because we think obviously that uh, this environment can uh, lead to uh, immune dysregulation, and uh, if we can understand more about the tumor microenvironment, uh, we might be able to come up with additional targets for immunotherapy. So these are my disclosures. And so, just talked about the tumor microenvironment. It's, you know, the tumor is not just uh, the tumor cells, but in fact, there's a number of uh, different kinds of cells, fibroblasts, myeloid cells, and various immune cells. But it turns out that many of these cells that are infiltrating the tumor um, are dysregulated, functionally impaired, and contribute to the tumor progression. Um, and this is illustrated here. This is, um, uh, I, I took this from Nick Restivo, and uh, you can see that there's the tumor microenvironment. Um, right here, and these are the tumor cells, and these are the infiltrating cells. So it was originally thought that these cells were all coming in to promote an anti-tumor response, but it turns out many of these cells are there to promote the tumor. So it's the opposite of what we originally thought. And so the idea now is to try to understand this better, and, and this is occurring now with the interactions of with looking at PD-1 and pd one um, so this is just a slide from uh, Walt Storkus showing that the, uh, in, in, in kidney cancer patients and melanomas, there is a, a decrease in the uh, type 1 gamma interferon response, and it's linked, linked to active disease. So the only time you see uh, in these patients um, a T cell CD8 response was when they either had no evidence of disease or they had disease, but it was, uh, they were uh, long-term um, survivors. And this is also shows that these cells are skewed towards a type two gamma interferon, uh, type two response rather than gamma interferon. So they're making more like immunosuppressive molecules, which is IL-5 and 4. So they're all making IL-5, but they're not making um, gamma interferon with the exception of the ones with NED. So people that have, uh, um, so, so in, in, this, in this setting, the, the tumor is actually uh, regulating the, the development of a T cell response. And we've seen this in kidney cancer and in melanomas. So what, what are the features that, that can uh, promote this uh, dysfunction? Well, it's, you can have a level of T cell priming where you have function, uh, reduced uh, uh, function of uh, dendritic cells, reduced, uh, 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 reduced uh, recruitment of these cells into the tumor. Uh, you can get recruitment of uh, less recruitment of uh, effector cells because maybe the chemokines that we're using to attract them are not there. There's also, uh, as we're gonna talk about, there's presence of these immunosuppressive cell types. I'm not gonna talk about the pd one and CTL4 because that's being covered. So I'm gonna focus a bit on, on these cell types. So as you know, there's T regulatory cells that have the FOXP3 that helps regulate the, uh, the suppressive activity of these cells. And these cells can come from the thymus and go into the, the tumors and where they can suppress uh, you can also take uh, naive T cells, and after exposure to um, cholerogenic DCs, the presence of TGF beta, they can become T regulatory like and suppress. And you can see that there are multiple mechanisms by which they can suppress the immune response, and it's, it's, it's looking now like uh, CTLA4 may be one of the more important uh, components here. So, but there are multiple mechanisms. Um, and if you look at, um, there's always, in most of these, cancer patient, this is kidney cancer, there is an increase, it's a modest, but an increase in these Tregs in the, in, the, uh, in the blood, and you can also see them in the tumor. Um, and, and in some cases, I think we looked, uh, looked through the literature and there was nine papers showing that there's an increase in Tregs in the uh, uh, patients with kidney cancer, but only four of those related to poor clinical outcome. Um, so there's a little more work to be done to, to look at that. Uh, how this relates to out outcome. Um, you can also show that um, in this paper that if you um, deplete the Tregs by using IL-2 that has a, a diphtheria toxin, you can improve the um, T cell response uh, to, to the vaccine as, as shown here. So the other cell that's important and that's the one we've been studying more is the myeloid derived suppressor cells, heterogeneous population of myeloid cells that are present in less than 1% in the peripheral blood of normals, but are increased in response to a variety of different uh, growth factors as shown here. 
Um, and these cells uh, can leave two flavors. They're either granulocytic or monocytic in mice. And, and the same populations here, but in, in humans, there's also a lineage negative population. And these cells are interesting because they have a lot of plasticity. They can uh, uh, differentiate into uh, these endothelial cells, or they can differentiate into macrophages, or uh, the monocytics can differentiate into granulocytic cells. So understanding that process, I think, is going to be, uh, inter is, is going to be important. So in, in many cancers, including kidney cancer, lung cancer, uh, brain cancer, the, in, the, the largest population are the granulocytic MDSCs, and that's shown here, these, these, these guys. And that there's now some data suggesting from a, a paper recent in uh, Nature Medicine that the levels of these does correlate with bad outcomes. So patients that had baseline levels um, of low levels of these MDSCs, the monocytic population, had a better survival curve than those that had higher levels. And this has also been reported in the same paper for the granulocytic population, and there's some also data on uh, uh, several other tumor types. Um, so it's been shown that these cells are immunosuppressive, so here's, here they are suppressing T cell proliferation, and you can dilute them out, and they're less, you know, less of them, there's less suppression. We also find that these cells probably promote angiogenesis, because if you inject these tumors into non-skid mice, these are human tumors, uh, you can see the blood vessels after five days, but if you put in a few uh, these granulocytic MDSCs, uh, you can increase the vascular uh, component here of, of these tumors. So they also make proangiogenic uh, molecules. So how do they suppress? Well, they do so by different mechanisms. One of the major ones is they produce arginase and uh, uh, nitric oxide, where they can then uh, downregulate or reduce the amount of these two amino acids, which then causes T cell dysfunction, and you have the loss of the zeta chain. They also can produce uh, reactive oxygen species, and they can also make nit nitric oxide, uh, which can then nitrate the T cell receptors and cause uh, dysfunction. Indirectly, they can induce Tregs um, cells, they can induce Th2s and, and macrophages. Uh, neutrophils we also think are important. Um, they're just being studied, and that is they, there's elevated levels of these in, in kidney cancer and other patients that correlate with bad outcome. Um, and if you look at the neutrophils from these patients, they are, uh, when you compare them to normals, uh, immunosuppressive, as shown here. And these cells can also promote, um, unlike normal neutrophils, which don't, can promote uh, the vasculature when you mix the tumor with these uh, granulocytic MDSCs you put them in the not skid mice. So we, we do think they play a role as well, and that's being studied. Um, macrophages can also be part of the uh, problem here because under normal, in normal tissues, you have these uh, macrophages which uh, can promote a type 1 inflammation, a type 1 response, and a tumorocidal. But in the t tumor milieu, you have a bunch of cytokines and other growth factors and products that can shift these to this kind of a phenotype. And there could be different uh, levels of this uh, M2 phenotype, and it's produced primarily by exposure to IL-4, uh, IL-10, and 13, and this then drives these cells to suppress T cell function, uh, suppress the type 2, type 1 response, and uh, they can promote um, uh, immune suppression. This is just one example in kidney cancer. It's recently identified that there's a number of MDS, uh, TAMs in the, in the tumor, and they uh, have an uh, upregulation or activation of the uh, lipoxygenase pathway leading to the production of these uh, lipids. And these lipids can either promote more monocytic infiltrate, reduce uh, IL-10, and also promote um, the induction of these T regulatory cells. And also, because this kidney cancer, where you have the VHL mutation, you have uh, constitutive HIF-1-alpha, and you have hypoxia, that also can promote uh, immune suppression. You can see here the Tregs are increased in this setting. Uh, there's an increase in uh, uh, the chemokine that can promote these cells into the tumor. It also can induce more MDSCs to be more suppressive and also to differentiate into tumor-associated macrophages. And on the flip side, it can downregulate dendritic cell ability to present antigens. So the, this tumor buyer is pretty hostile for uh, the immune system. Um, just the one slide I have is for the pd one is that there's renal tumors, lines that have pd one and if you can downregulate that, that on the surface with the 
siRNA, you can see that there's some reduction in the ability of these tumors to induce apoptosis in T cells. And you'll hear more about the fact that PD1 is expressed in kidney cancer. It's a poor, uh, correlated with poor outcome. And it's not only expressed on the tumors, but on macrophages and dendritic cells. And there's also um, a uh, secreted form of this. This is just a slide to show that one of the important uh, equations here are the chemokines and chemokine receptors, which we're beginning to study as well as others, and this just shows the kinds of receptors are on these different suppressive cells, and here are the, uh, the ligands that can bind and attract these cells into the tumor. So which of these is the most important for trafficking is a, is a good area of in investigation going on. There's a lots now, I just made a short list of all the different uh, strategies used to reduce these MDSCs or TAMs or Tregs, and so there are now different uh, methodologies you can use to reduce these, and so it'll be interesting to see what effect this has when you combine this with vaccines and with other uh, approaches. I uh, just wanted to mention one example of modulating the tumor microenvironment with sinitinib. Uh, so we have shown that uh, in, in cancer patients, kidney cancer, you can see a reduction in the uh, number of MDSCs over time, and that's the corresponding increase in T TH1 response, gamma interferon. And if you look in the tumor, it's more of a mixed bag where some of these papers had very low levels of MDSCs and uh, good, good T cell gamma interferon response, but the others had uh, retained the, the, T, 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 uh, the MDSCs and there's no T cell, T cell response. And so we have some now data that suggests that these myeloid cells are, are involved in uh, uh, the resistance to some of these TKIs and, and there's another group that has similar data. So, so because they can suppress um, uh, MDSC numbers and Tregs and can improve T cell gamma interferon response, uh, people have combined this, uh, this uh, with Sutent with, with the various vaccines. And I think there's like four or five papers now on this. And this is one by um, uh, Anna Mikabos and Walter Sorkis's lab where it shows that this combination can re reduce the tumor volume better than either uh, drug alone, but this slide actually shows that it can really improve the immunotherapy, the, the T cell response. You get a great increase in CD8, CD4s, uh, a loss of CD uh, uh, MDSCs, and a loss of T, uh, T regulatory cells. And there's also, in the tumor, if you look, there's a skewing towards uh, a type one uh, response, both in terms of gamma and interferon production, as well as in uh, uh, gamma interferon production and the uh, uh, cytokines and receptors that are associated with the type 1 response. Um, and based on that, there is now uh, several, two clinical trials ongoing to compare, to, to look at whether or not sinitinib will be efficacious with the uh, vaccine therapy. And we're beginning to look at that, uh, uh, another vaccine uh, with Walter Storkis looking at the uh, targeting antigens on the tumor vasculature. Um, this is just to show that not only do, the, do these uh, TKIs working with vaccines, but there are people now that are looking at sinitinib and psopamid with anti-PD-1 and probably CTLA-4. So that's coming down the line. Uh, so in conclusion, there is a heterogeneity in, in patients' response to immune-based immunotherapy, and it's a significant component of that heterogeneity comes from differences at the level of the tumor microenvironment. So the key um, determining factors in the tumor environment include the recruitment of effector T cells, local production of cytokines, and the presence of local immunosuppressive mechanisms. So further understanding this, these processes, we think will uncover additional targets. And it's, it's pretty impressive to see what's, what the studies have shown so far that CTLA-4 and PD-1 have been major uh, players now. Um, so I think I will stop here. And this is a uh, usually sunny days in Cleveland, so. <laughs>